This is the Cobb Air Review. Let's go. Welcome back to Chef Campers. My name is Michael and for the last five years I have been living and traveling in my camper van with my wife Steph behind the camera with our beautiful dog Rupert and our wonderful van Basco. It's a quite a new van. We've had different vans in the past but we'll talk about that another time. Right, let's talk about the Cobb Premier Air. Now those of you who have been following me from the very start, which was actually eight years ago, you might have first found out about me because I was using Cobbs all the time. Well, since then, we've obviously gone traveling, we've gone full time. I switched to a Cobb Premier Air or Cobb Air. Now I've been using this since we traveled to the Arctic Circle. So I use this up in the top of the very top of Norway. And I've learned a lot about the Cobb Barbecue. And what I'd like to share with you is some of the hints, the tips that I've got from using this. So if you've never had a Cobb before, let me talk through what it is, how it works, and then let me talk about the differences that the Cobb Air has. So this is, it's called a barbecue. Um, and I like to think of it as an offset barbecue. So if you're familiar with kind of grilling and low and slow barbecue cooking, you can either have cooking where you're directly over the charcoal, over the coals, over the flame, and that's direct grilling, direct barbecue. And then you can have cooking, which is you have the coal on one side and you have your food on the other side and the heat comes up and swirls around and cooks it gently and slowly, a bit like an oven. This falls into the setting, second category and there are ways that you can make it fall into the first category, but that's not its strong point. Its strong point is that it is an offset barbecue. And let me explain how it does that. First of all, we've got this dome. Now this dome, it's made of stainless steel, I think. I don't know, I don't know what it's made of. It's made of stainless steel, it's gotta be. Uh, it's very light, which is what I like about the cob. And on the cob air, we have a roof vent. Now, if we open that vent up, more air, more oxygen comes in. The, uh, the charcoal gets hotter, you have a higher heat. Lower this down, reduces the oxygen coming through, lowers your temperature. That's new on the cob air. So being able to control your heat has just got a lot better on the cob. Prior to that, we used to have to control it by putting different charcoal in or different briquettes in and different fuel. It was a bit more complicated than that. Next, this is the box standard one, by the way. Next up is your heat deflector plate. Now, every cob comes with this handle. It's really, really useful. This handle works with all the, the different attachments, which I'll demonstrate now. But next up, we've got the hot plate. Now, the hot plate you'll see has got dots around the side and a kind of a solid plate in the middle. And what's that, what that is for is for the, the air, the hot air to come out of these holes um, because the charcoal is directly underneath this bit. So the, the, the heat kind of hits this middle bit and then starts lifting through these holes and then swirling around the dome. And that's how it cooks. Now that is, uh, it's all right. These are non-stick. You can get, a, I think, a, a stainless steel one now, which I think I'll move to eventually. I'm not that, I'm not that keen on non-stick overall, if I'm honest with you. Um, but it does its job and I'll show you that I actually, I actually don't do much on this. Next up, and this is new to the, um, the Cobb Air, is the, well, this isn't new. This is the charcoal basket. So this is what you put your briquettes in. You can get special uh, Cobb rings. I've only used them once. I've never used them since. Um, I'd like to try them again, I think, just to see how I'd get on with them now. Um, and they, they, you know, you light them up and after two minutes the smoke goes, then you pop the disc in there and pop it in and then you're ready to cook. What I tend to use is charcoal, Australian heat beads, briquettes, but I'll do a whole different video on cob fuel. So if you're interested in that, then make sure you subscribe. So that's the fuel basket. But what's new about the cob air is this. It's a removable ashtray. And this is a game changer because prior to that, used to be part of this so when you used to have to empty it'd have to go like that and then all the ash would drop in the well now we can literally take this out and we can empty it keeping the well nice and clean so that's the ashtray next up is the well now this is a love i've got a love-hate relationship with the well this thing gets very very dirty inside if you don't use roasting racks or anything like that but the idea behind it is that you can put beer water or wine in there and it can kind of steam. Sometimes I put vegetables in there or put them in foil packets to keep them warm, but I don't use it that much, to be honest. It's a bit, I'd be lying if I said that's a massive, that's a massive thing that I use, because like, I don't really use it that much, but it's there and maybe you will find it useful for something. But 
it's got an opportunity to be done. Now this thing gets absolutely filthy if you don't use the roasting trays like I said. And actually, I've spent a long time cleaning this for this video and I actually used a wire brush on an electric um, cordless drill thing, didn't I, Steph? I went, bzzz, woke everybody up with it. So yeah, that's one thing. Next is the basket, the, the, the base. Now the base on the cob air has got more holes, I believe, on the bottom to allow more oxygen in, to allow the, the temperatures to get higher. So when we're talking about a cob air now, we're talking about hot, hotter temperatures. Usually I used to, on a regular cob, I would probably hover somewhere between 160 and 180. On this thing, it can go from 150 right up to about 240. Uh, degrees centigrade. Check that out in Fahrenheit if you're in a different part of the world, but those of us who use centigrade, that's what temperature it does. Now, let me put this back together and then explain some of the issues I've had. First of all, I kind of keep damaging these. Now, this could be completely my fault, nothing to do with cob. I sometimes use it inappropriately. I put this directly on flames to preheat charcoal. And I also once burnt a hole in the bottom of this by putting my fire lighters direct in it. I kind of still do that, so I am sorry, but I just find it easy and convenient. So, but it looks like they have, oh God, there's a bug. Don't stay in there, mate, you'll get cooked. That's um, a shield bug. Right, I have, yeah, I have damaged these in the past, uh, but they have seemed to have upgraded them. So this one I got, this Cobb Air, was a bit of a prototype, I think, and since then I've, I've, I've got hold of a new one of these and it seems to be much thicker, so that's better. So we'll pop that in there. This thing, the first time I used the Cobb, I kind of lit it, I got the, the round disc, I lit it and I put it on there, and then I put some burgers on it, and they took ages to cook, and all loads of fat went into the well. It was a bit annoying. I kept having to put them into the middle, then moving them out to the outside. Fell out of love with it, put it in the cupboard, never used it again. And I thought that was a piece of rubbish. How wrong I was. See the handle? Can move that off. The thing you've got to think about with a cob is that this is an oven, it's a field oven. And once you start treating it like an oven and cooking like an oven, it really does open up an opportunity. Now, one of the other problems I've had I keep damaging these grommets here. And again, it could be because I can be a little bit heavy handed. We do live in the van. I use this thing loads, like way more than most people. And I've also um, only last week lost another grommet. This one here is a bit loose because I've damaged it a little bit. And that's just from when it's been on the ground and it's getting pushed around it. It can break the rubber a little bit, but all of these are replacements that you can get hold of. So that's one thing I really like about the cob actually. You know, if you want replacement parts, you can buy them. You don't have to buy a brand new thing again, which is great. Now, that's the only problem I've had with it so far. I kind of have touched on cleaning and I've spent a long time cleaning this, but what I didn't do was clean the lid. But what I did do was clean one, just get, a, I'll give you, can you see that? There's a clean line there and then there's a dark bit here. Now that's what the lid looks like when you start smoking on it and you do long cooks on it. You can scrub it back, you can clean it back every time, but some would argue that that adds aroma and flavor to your meat. So that's kind of how the cob is set up and that's how you use it. I'm gonna show you a little hack actually I do for packing it because space is everything to me. And one of the ways in which I pack it is I put this upside down into there. I then put the basket in and then I put this in upside down and then that makes it quite flat. But it is a round barbecue and round things don't go well in vans in my opinion because you can't really put that in a corner without wasting space. So that is maybe another drawback. Oh and one more thing to mention as well if we're talking about faults I've had actually is this ring on top that allows it to open and close works beautifully but I've now had to start using this to open and close it which isn't a problem I can do it quite easily actually it's not it's not that big of a deal but this used to turn it but it's a piece of kind of plastic or something in there that's worn and broken and now it's it's not turning anymore on the top. I took it apart to try and fix it, but I'm not gonna be able to fix it easily. So for now, I'm just kind of turning it manually like that, but it's not a big thing, but just something to be mindful of. And I do have to stress, you know, I've used this a lot and I've been quite heavy handed with it. Um, I should have wore gloves for handling that cob, but hey ho. Right, that is, my show and tell of the cob barbecue. Now what I'm gonna do is show you two essential items you need 
if you are buying a cob barbecue. Without these items, it would probably sit in the cupboard for me. Item number one, the roasting rack. This is like getting, oh, oh, I've just ate a fly, I think. Um, item number one, this is a roasting rack. I might have to wash that down, you know, Steph. No, we'll have, we'll have a glass of wine when we start cooking, not now, because last week we actually filmed this, this whole thing we filmed, we used a different camera, it didn't come out very good, I drank a lot of whiskey sours, it didn't come out that great, so we're actually doing it again the weekend after. So I've, I've done this video twice, which is why it's probably going smoother now. Anyway, the roasting rack. This thing is a work of art, and it's not that clean. I mean, I have tried, but I mean, it gets dirty, get over it. When you put that on your cob, oh, oh, it's all right, Rube. He, he always kicks off if I drop litter. Good for you, good for you, sit down. You were sleeping, S sit down. What's the matter? Chicken is gonna be ready soon. The chicken will be ready. You just have to sit there and wait. Sit down. You have to wait. Right, roasting rack. When you put this on your cob, it transforms it. It takes it away from that hot plate in the middle and those air, those air things at the side that blocks airflow. You raise everything up. And then when you raise it up, it turns this into an oven shelf. So think of this as maybe the middle or bottom oven shelf in your oven at home. The next important item is this, the extender ring. Pop that on there, pop that on there. You've now got nice elevation, which means you can put bigger chunks of meat in there if you like me and you like to cook meat. These two things together transform the cob for me. And if you bought a cob without buying these two things, you're bonkers. Right, what else do I use this roasting rack for? When I'm cooking in the Arctic Circle, it's minus 20. I put it on the outside and it gives it a bit of a windbreak. It keeps the temperatures up. I don't know if you're supposed to use that. And if you break your cob because you do that, don't blame me, but I've done it loads and I haven't broke the cob so far. I've spoke about this being the fuel basket, but what I didn't talk about is the fact that when you fill this fuel basket up with charcoal, and you put it in there, it'll burn between two to four hours. I've literally had this cooked for four hours on Australian heat beads in here. When I'm using regular charcoal, it's about two and a half hours. And I get a more intense heat at the very start. But that means it's incredibly, incredibly efficient. I think I'd be right in saying it's one of the most efficient barbecues in the world. So consider that because it might take up a little bit, not that much room, a little bit of room but the amount of charcoal that you have to carry to operate this is, is tiny in comparison. So I run a Weber Go Anywhere as well, a big rectangle thing, and I might do a review on that. But to run that, that bag of charcoal down there would probably last maybe, I don't know, four times. To run the cob from that bag, I'm expecting at least 15 cooks from it. So that shows you actually how efficient this thing is and how much more you can get from it. So charcoal lasts a lot longer. But that is, the, oh, and I will do it that way so you can see the cob there. But that for me is a brilliant, brilliant piece of kit. 